so hi Cam, thanks very much for being with us today. Thanks for having me, Ed. No problem. Could you start with a little bit about what your job entails at REA Group? So I'm the Executive Manager of Economic Research and and basically what that means is a a few different things. Uh, We do a lot of presentations to our customers, telling them about what's happening in the market, what we're seeing in terms of consumer behaviour across our platforms and, and, and the businesses that we own. Uh, obviously writing a lot of content uh, about what's happened, both news and, and reports. Um, so looking at all this great data that we have and, and what it's telling us about things, but also you know responding to requests from journalists, both internal and external to realestate.com.au. Uh, and then I guess the, the other big thing that we're doing is just looking at ways that we can better use all of this great data that we have. So uh, REA Group bought a property data business about two years ago now. So there's, we're still quite um, early along in this journey in terms of what we can do with our, our property data, how we productize it and, and how we get it out to consumers and to customers. So I'm, I'm working quite heavily with the the, the teams there to, to figure out what we can do with it and, uh, you know, what are the best methodologies to, to use with that, uh, that data and what are, the, what are the opportunities? So there's, there's, there's quite a lot of strings to the bow of my, uh, of, of my job at, uh, at REA Group. Okay. Um, and what's your background? Do you have a real estate background or is it just a specifically a data background and it's easy to transfer to the world of real estate? No, mine's very much more of a, a property slash real estate background. So I've got a degree in property economics. Um, where, where I've come from, I've worked previously. So I worked for a property developer. Um, I've worked as a commercial and residential research analyst. Uh, I've worked as an advisor to, um, to developers about, you know, what type of products to build, what price points, this kind of information. And before I joined um, REA Group, I was at a company called CoreLogic uh, in Australia for 11 and a half years. Uh, and that was a property uh, data business uh, that does a lot of what uh, REA Group is trying to do with their data now, but has been doing it for 30 years. So a bit of a diverse background, but, but very much more so in the, uh, in the property space than the, the mathematics or, or data space specifically. Okay, uh, you mentioned there about how your role encompasses lots of different things. Uh, and obviously we've seen, especially recently, how at Property Portals, uh, data is becoming increasingly important, not only in and of itself, as you mentioned, sort of productizing data and, and selling it to those who are interested, but also uh, when it comes to the portal itself, um, data that goes alongside the listings, and also in terms of the marketing. Um, I want to ask you, has your role changed at all recently? Um, has, has your role, do you talk to the marketing department a bit more than you used to, be, to maybe? Uh, well, I've actually always sat in the marketing department uh, oh, okay. in terms of where my sits at, uh, at uh, realestate.com.au. So I, I talk to the marketing department just as much, but I've only been in this role for 18 months. Um, so it hasn't really changed that much. It's just more about getting a bit of momentum about the, the stuff we're doing. And obviously, as we're making improvements to our, our databases and, and able to access more and more data, but, but certainly as a broader business, we're using all of this uh, great insight that we have on consumers uh, and, and targeting them much better in terms of you know, feeding them up listings um, speaking to them and giving them information about the housing market that they w- might want um, during different times in their journey, whether they're just sort of tie kicking and, and not really serious about looking, but just browsing right through to when they're, they're ready to go and make a decision about uh, what they want to purchase and, and, you know, probably going to make that transaction reasonably soon. Okay. Um, one thing I wanted to ask, I've been looking through realestate.com.au uh, quite a lot recently uh, and I've actually used it as an example with other people, other people I've interviewed, just sort of saying, wow, look at the amount of data that there is out there. Um, it seems to me like there is just almost endless data available in Australia. How much of an appetite is there among consumers and end users for all of this data? Uh, and has it been growing uh, as people become more data savvy? It's definitely growing. And I think... Um, the way we see it is for consumers, we want people to be able to transact property more easily. Uh, and, you know, in Australia, property is very expensive. 
Uh, you know, the, the, the median house price nationally is about $600,000. So for a lot of people, this is the biggest expenditure they'll ever have in their life when they're buying a property. So we want to give them as much information as we can so they can make a, the most informed decision as they possibly can. Uh, now, a lot, of the, a lot of the information comes from listings, but that's also why um, REA Group uh, acquired a property data business about two years ago because they realised that we can, we can tell you a lot about what other consumers are doing, but we also need to have that information to tell you what's actually happening in the market so people can make a much more informed decision. And that's also allowing us to build a, a lot of other products that um, real estate agents will use to, to help when they're pitching um, to customers um, to give them the information to make the best decision about you know, what price to list at, how long the property is going to take to sell, and even more granularly down to who the buyers are likely to look, look like and any end to the sort of uh, to, to how far we can go with um, the information that we're looking for here. And, and we're always keen to get more and more data if possible. Okay, so you touched a little bit on it there, but um, obviously your data comes from uh, realestate.com.au and how users interact, et cetera, et cetera, and, and the listings. And also this uh, data business you acquired. I was actually looking this morning. There's a lot of sort of demographic data on suburbs and things like that. Uh, is that data that you can get from the government? Uh, where is that kind of data available? Yeah, that, that comes from the government, mainly relying on census, census data. So a bit of it's outdated. Um, some of it does get updated uh, between the census. We have a census every five years in Australia. So there's one actually due later this year in, in 2021. Uh, but the Bureau of Statistics does um, update things like population estimates on, on an annual basis. And, and there's other sources throughout that five-year period where they do update some of that information. And more and more, we're actually starting to see private businesses um, providing some of that demographic data as well. And there's other sources, you know, we find out about how people are moving by talking to Australia Post uh, and they track that in, in terms of measuring how people are forwarding their forwarding their, their letters that go to their house. So someone might be living here and then getting that forwarded to a new address, uh, indicative of them moving. So there's lots of different places where you can get this data. And I guess the big thing at the moment is that um, there's so many businesses, not just in, in real estate, that are, are data hungry these, these days. So there's increasingly a lot more providers of that information. Yeah, absolutely. Um, speaking about... Uh, about this. We actually had uh, a columnist of ours, Gil Schmiel, write a piece for us a few months ago in which he says that basically um, governments are, are lagging behind somewhat when it comes to housing data. And effectively, large property portals such as realestate.com.au are now the, the de facto sources uh, for property data as a whole. Uh, firstly, would you agree with this? Um, and has the Australian government ever come to you guys to request your data? So uh, I'd agree that in terms of property, you know, portals and, and property data companies that get information from other sources probably do have a lot more information uh, than, than the government or, or other people. So definitely, I think we do hold a lot of information. We know what consumers are looking for. We know what they're looking at. We know what price points they're searching for. Uh, you know, we can even get down to the point that we know when someone is actually getting close to making a decision about buying a property. So we have spoken to government departments in the past about uh, what we do. And, and there has definitely been times in the past where there has been interest in, in acquiring some of the data and insights that we have um, just so they can better understand uh, what's happening, you know, help them make policy decisions based on on the kind of things that uh, that the, the voters out there are doing. Okay. Um, we've spoken a bit about, well, there's obviously a lot of data that you guys have and that you include uh, in what you do. Is there a particular data set out there that either doesn't exist yet or exists, but you can't get your hands on that you'd really love to work with? Yeah, I think in Australia, one of the big things that we're missing is actually details about the mortgage of the property. And there are companies that have that information, but there's extreme restrictions on how they can use it. So I know in, in, in parts of the US, for example, 
on the on the title, or not even on the title, but property data providers have information on which bank holds the mortgage on that property, and even when they actually acquired that property, things like how much deposit was paid, and so the the share that's owned by the lender and the share that's owned by the uh, the mortgagee. So I think that sort of information in Australia would be really, really valuable. Uh, I think the, the sort of products that you could build on the back of that would be very exciting. But I don't see a, a situation where the government would let us or, or other providers or anyone really start publishing that that information in Australia, unfortunately. But that, that's what I'd love to see. Okay, yeah, interesting. Um, is there anything specifically that you guys uh, are working on, any kind of new project uh, that you'd like to talk about, that you'd like to reveal to us? <laughs> well, I'm not actually in the product uh, product space, so I probably can't really talk too much about uh, any product development that's coming on. But but I think for us, the, the big thing that we're working on in the data space is just uh, a replatforming of all of our data and then, uh, you know, filling in the gaps. But I think there's some really exciting stuff that we see because, you know, Thing, I think even over the last few years, some of the exciting things that we've started to look at is like um, when a property is sold. So historically, you have to either ring up a real estate agent and get that information, or you have to go and wait until the Value with Generals Department send you through that data. Uh, because of the way a listing is and, and the way that rankings work on our site, uh, we're now getting told as soon as a property is sold, it's moving to a separate section of our site. Uh, similarly, we're getting uh, those kind of things with the rental market as well. So I think tracking what's happening with sales uh, data on a weekly basis is really exciting. Uh, also, I think just a, a lot of the stuff that we're doing around demand and, and matching that up with supply. So obviously, we know what's happening with supply in terms of the, the listings that we have on our portal. Um, but measuring those people that are really close to making a decision about buying a property and, and, and seeing, you know, being able to expose to consumers if you're thinking about selling your property, you know, this is the level of demand in your area. There's only X amount of properties available for sale at the moment, but there's, you know, 10 times that many people actually looking for a property in this suburb. So it's a good time to list your property. So I think some of that kind of stuff that we're starting to expose to our consumers is really exciting. Okay. Um, so the reason that I asked that question, well, firstly, I'm a journalist and I'd like an exclusive if you can give me one, but uh, the, the reason I kind of asked it was... Um, We've seen recently how Zillow in the United States is now changing their uh, their estimate, their their home buying, um, sorry, their um, home value engine into an i buying offer engine, uh, which I thought uh, is is a huge step forward. Um, I just wanted to get your reaction to that as somebody who works uh, in a big property portal with data. Is this a moon landing moment? Ah, uh, I think I think there's the Zillow. Um, what they're trying to do as a business is very different to what realestate.com.au is. I, I think, you know, we, we prefer to look at ourselves as partnering with the real estate industry and, uh, you know, we're not trying to take real estate agents out of the equation. We're trying to, you know, create leads for real estate agents and we're trying to support them and we're trying to bring more consumers to our website so they can get their properties sold. Whereas I think Zillow's um, approach tends to be more trying to cut out that real estate agent middleman by by doing this i buyer thing. So uh, I'm, I'm not necessarily privy to what our strategy is, but I don't believe that that's the kind of strategy uh, we would take. But it, it's going to be very interesting to see how that goes for them because you, you, they're obviously going to going to want to be pretty confident that their estimates are are good. Um, and uh, and I know from previous roles and this role that. You know, automated valuation models work well for a lot of properties, but there's also a lot of properties that they don't work particularly well for. So uh, it'll, it'll be very interesting over the next, you know, couple of months and even years to see how this roll out, what the, what the take-up is of it. Um, particularly at the moment in the US, obviously a, a really strong housing market at the moment. So I wonder what proportion of people will be happy to take that estimate or which people will try their luck um, actually taking the, you know, taking the property to market in a traditional way in the hope that they might actually get some more money for it. Cam, thanks very much for talking to us today. Uh, it's been a, a pleasure talking to you and uh, I look forward to seeing what uh, REA Group does with data going forward.